Well folks, here we are just south of Sioux City, Iowa. This is a monument that was erected to Sergeant Charles Floyd Jr. who died in this area August 20th, 1804. Now you might be asking yourself why would a sergeant of the U.S. Army who died in 1804 have an obelisk built in his honor? Well, Sergeant Charles Floyd Jr. was the only member of the Lewis and Clark Expedition who died on that two-year journey. And this was just about three months after they departed St. Louis. So he didn't make it very long. Nobody really knows why he died, but because of all the journals that were kept by all the members of the expedition, Modern doctors have determined that it was probably a disease brought on by the rupture of his appendix. Let me put this in here between the bars and see if you can read the plaque here at the base. In commemoration of the Louisiana Purchase made during the administration of Thomas Jefferson, third president of the United States, April 30th, 1803. Of its successful exploration by the heroic members of the Lewis and Clark Expedition of the Valor of the American Soldier, and the enterprise, courage, and fortitude of the American pioneer to whom these great states west of the Mississippi River owe their secure foundation. I hope you can read this. This is the bottom cornerstone. This is locally quarried sandstone that they built this obelisk out of. That says H.M. Chittenden. Captain Corps of Engineers, USA, Engineer and Architect. In my humble opinion, my friends, the Lewis and Clark Expedition is one piece of American history that is greatly overlooked. And I ask this simple question, and think about it seriously. How many of you honestly believe that you could have made that expedition? Two years on foot from St. Louis, Missouri to what today is Astoria, Oregon at the mouth of the Columbia River, spending a winter there and then back by foot. And not all by foot, they did travel by boat some up and down the rivers, canoes down the Columbia, canoes back up the Columbia River. By their boat that they had, that they had to pole up the Missouri River and then by canoe back down the Missouri River. Some uh, horseback, but not very much. And that was mostly the return trip. They almost starved to death on the way out in the, uh, I don't believe it was the Rocky Mountains, but it might have been the, I don't remember, but it was, uh, might have been the Blackfoot Mountains where they almost starved to death. They didn't take food with them. They lived off the land. They were in hostile territory with the American Indian from one tribe to the next to the next. One day they might be with one tribe, a week later they might be sitting with a, a, another tribe that was at war with the tribe they had just been with. It was a hell of a journey. It took a hell of a lot of strong men with strong intestinal fortitude to be able to make that journey. And all the knowledge of the western United States that they imparted to the Easterners at that time, call them Easterners today, but they were Americans also, but... greatly overlooked journey and a greatly overlooked piece of American history in my opinion. This is on the south side of the obelisk, well, the, uh, I believe it's the west side of the obelisk, overlooking the river. Up in the wreath says Floyd, this shaft marks the burial place of Sergeant Charles Floyd, a member of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. He died in this country service and was buried near this spot August 20th, 1804. The graves of such men are, are pilgrim shrines, shrines to no class or creed confirmed, confined. Erected A.D. 1900 by the Floyd Memorial Association, aided by the United States and the state of Iowa. You can hear the traffic, and there you can see that's Interstate 29, runs north and south. That's overlooking into Nebraska. That's the Missouri River. The 
they were traveling up. Like I said, modern doctors have determined from the from all of the journals that were kept, not just by Lewis and Clark, but every member of the expedition was required to keep a journal. Even Floyd himself wrote in July that he had been sick and very, very sick, but now was restored to health. That was one of his last journal entries. A few days later, he turned, took a turn for the worse again, and then died about a month later in August. I can't remember if it was Lewis or Clark, but one of them noted in their journal of the plight of Sergeant Floyd and how they'd stopped here trying to restore him to health, and that all their attentions were turned to him. And that is the Missouri River. That's looking south. And now turning, looking north, and that would be Sioux City, Iowa in the distance. Let's see if I can zoom on that for you. I would highly recommend to each and every one of you to read the journals of Lewis and Clark. And I don't mean go out and find the, the full volume of all, I believe it was 20 books that were the journals of Lewis and Clark. But Bernard DeVoto did a very, very good abridged edition of the journals in the late 1950s, early 1960s, and then he revised it in the 70s, 1970s. I would read it. It is uh, quite an eye-opener to what these men endured on that two-year trek across America. Believe me, how many of you, when I, believe me when I ask you, how many of you could make that journey today? I don't think there's many of us who could do it. Oh, we probably dream that we'd like to do it. We'd like to challenge the opportunity to live off land. But truthfully, could we really survive? Men like that are what built our great country. And men like that are in great need today. For we have become complacent and soft in our comfort. But we need to be remember we need to remember and be awoken to the fact that we are not as great as those men who built this great country. And to restore America to her greatness. We need to learn to become great like those men once were. Well, that's all for today, guys. Bye-bye.